no, no, you answer me. You're Why I'm doing this? Uh, you're going to record it. Why? Uh, to put it out on your Instagram. Why? <laughs> to let the whole world know that Penny Peel is still here. That I you're believe here. in you. Alhamdulillah. As Penny Peel, not in you as an individual. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> as well as you. I brought three challenges to you. I'm very excited, very motivated by being with you today. I did not know that I, ca I am coming here to speak, but I am going to speak, because I will use the opportunity to speak. First of all, who knows this flower, the flower, this uh, emblem, or what do you call it, this? Hmm. Yes? Very good, Srebrenica. 25th anniversary is 9 to 11 July this year. A scar on the face of humanity. Ugly scar. Bosnia is not settled yet. Still living in a very volatile situation. And we have to build peace in Bosnia. Second challenge, you might find the Islamic culture in non-Islamic organization, more. Prophet Sallallahu has not been described by, he is a Muslim, but he was described by his manner. And his wife mentioned twice, Kana khuluqur Quran, his manner was Quranic. So he was implementing the words of God in his life to save humanity and save community. Don't come and lecture me about hadith or Quran or verses from the Bible. Come and show me who you are by your manner, by your behavior, by your caring and sharing and what you stand for, by your values. So please don't corner yourself and calling yourself, I am a faith-based or non-faith-based. I am anti-faith-based terminology. More than 14 years ago, because it's divisive. I am a value-based individual. We all share the same values. Why about the Christian and the Jews and the Muslim on the other on this side and the rest on the other side? Communism, liberalism, socialism, and what else? Capitalism, our faith. Faith made by human being like us. So really, I am for the values. The value, the value for the people, and you make it happen. Because I believe in you. Don't ever be put back because you have challenges that you have not made. The challenge in, in Penny Appeal now is not you. It's what this, this mistake, which what happened to them, Penny Appeal, is you did not do it. You are facing it. You are clearing the mess. And we have to clear the mess. When people don't listen to advices years ago, don't think that people have not given advices to others. Four, five, six years ago, the advice was given, but was ignored. Now, today, we have to salute you as the current trustees and the executive board that you are addressing with every and each one of you who are addressing the situation and you will succeed and you'll go over it and because it's normal. It's every organization there's ups and downs and we together are going to pass this challenge. My third challenge to you could be difficult to the to the English linguistic, whatever you call it, because we develop new terminologies. You want to take the challenge? Yes? Bismillah. Bismillah. What do I mean by criteritarianism? Mr. Englishman. <laughs> criteritarianism. Go to Oxford Dictionary. Go to Cambridge. Go to even Amram Madden, you teach English. Huh? English or uh, geography? <laughs> you gave up. You never heard. Of course, because I'm challenging you. You, you. We invented this word at the time of Amran and uh, Khalid when I was working with them. 
and they were teaching me. And through their vision and the peanut philosophy, which Amran invented, by the way, he's very rich. He's got a very huge peanut factory and, uh, <laughs> and farm. So you, you, you get him, huh? <laughs> the challenge is, I'm trying to replace humanitarianism with creaturetarianism. Humanitarianism reflects you back to the human being. Creaturetarianism reflects you back to the creator. Okay? What I'm saying to you, because you're all young, you don't stop challenging the status quo. Keep providing new solution. Keep thinking outside the box. Whether it's in the linguistic, or in the field, or anywhere. You can do it. If somebody like myself at my age doing that, you can do better and better and better. Fourth challenge, who is the owner of the organization? Who owns this organization? The donors. The donors. You failed badly. Sorry? I don't like the word beneficiary, but we need to change it as well. The providers. Those providers provide us our jobs, our income, our pay rise, and our being here, enjoying a good life. Why they are in Adlib, living under a tree in the middle of the snow or the raining situation? Why I'm talking about creaturetarianism? What are we doing for the animals and the birds in Australia? They are our responsibility, not a fundraising tool. The providers are the owner of the organization. Those little children who have no mother and no father, those rape victims, women and young girls, who are actually in a very distressful situation. They are the real owner of the organization. Always, always, always put them in front of you on the desk because they are our employers. And we work for them, whether the trustees or the donor or others. Even if the donors give the money, he gave a duty written upon him and here by God. God given right to you as a rich man and woman to give it. Don't let the needy people to stand in front of your house, stretch their hand to you, and you treat them miserably. No way should allow it to happen in a humanitarian organization. So the real organization is the provider or are the providers in Africa, in Asia, in Australia, Latin America, even here in the UK, the homeless, the elderly, and everyone. It's extremely important to understand, do we have a mission? Do we have a message to deliver? Do we have a mission to accomplish? What's our mission? Are we just coming to the work to do our work and get our salary paid and increase the income? Motivation is not only by money. Motivation is by respect, empowerment, trust, and recognition. Young men and young women, or young women and men, so women first, isn't it? Yes? It's upon you to make Penny Appeal a successful organization. If you fail, you are the failure, not Penny Appeal. Penny Appeal is a vehicle, and you are driving it collectively together. So we have to look at the sector as a whole. We talk about the future. Harris was talking about it. Radwan was talking about it. Chris was talking about it. 30 years ago or 25 years ago, somebody asked me this question. You know what I said? I said, I don't want the organization I belong to at that time, which is Islamic Leaf, to be like United Nations. United Nations is not a cup of tea for me. It's a government organization. I want the movement of the International Committee of Red Cross and Crescent, and Crescent to look like Islamic Relief. 
think big or act local. What you call it, global. Think global, but act local. We have to build, because we are builders, we are communicator, or actually we are connector. And this is the message that we need to deliver. But our mission, what's our mission? We ask people here in this room, what's your mission? Come here next to me, please. Because we'll show you to the BBC. He will be all over the place. Thank you very much. Ah, it's very smart as a movie star. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. What's your mission? Uh, to uh, serve the people uh, who are uh, underprivileged uh, with the help of the people. I want the mission to come from your heart. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm doing from the last 15 years of my life, to be a vehicle. To, to be a vehicle. To be a vehicle, to be a bridge between uh, two different worlds we are living in. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless. Anybody else give me a mission? It's not about me to stand on the stage. It's about you to be on the stage. Any lady to come and tell me her mission? Any lady? You want gender equality? <laughs> you want leadership? You want to be trustees and board and the directors? Come here to the hot spot. It's not just lip service. You have to do it. I can believe that you can do it. You. The one behind you. No, no, no. You are, I know that you can do it. You. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Tell me your mission. My mission is to be part of positive change um, and to help those less fortunate than ourselves. Personally, I was working in the corporate sector for many years. Um, and I left the corporate sector for this reason, exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's my mission, to be part of positive change. Um, I wanted to do something of value, um, something that was rewarding in this world and in the hereafter, inshallah. Um, so yeah, that's my ultimate goal, and that's why I joined Penny Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Who are we? You have to answer these questions as individual who claim that he is responsible for the welfare of the life of the most distressed, marginalized, and uh, uh, forgotten communities. Who are we? Who are we? Do we know who are we? Do we understand when we sit on the desk in the office who are we? Why you are coming to the job for? What our job is doing? And fulfilling the fulfillment in my heart. You know, I was talking about the best two smiles that I have seen in my journey up till now. First was in Kashmir. I was coming by car from Kabul to Islamabad. I'm from Islamabad to Muzaffarabad. This is about nearly 15, 17 hours journey on the road. On the mountain of Kashmir, we found an old man standing on the road and waving to us. We thought that he wants some money because he looks miserable, he looks old, he looks uh, poor, and we stopped the car. Adnan Shima and myself. And the man was dumb. He said, ah, ah, I don't want money. Oh, he wants a lift. Sooner, we got him to the car. We have to open the window because we were weak humanitarian workers. Could not be able to stand the smell of his sweat. And we claim that we are champion. No way that if you cannot stand the perfume of your master, you cannot become a champion. We open all the windows. But I looked at his face, and I still, when I talk to you today, I could see him. I could see him. I could see him with his smile. More than any salary, more than any reward, smile you draw on the face of the children. A smile 
you bring to the faces of the women whom their husbands are dead or detained and they were left with a handful of children to look after with no means for their life to sustain their life. This is the reward and this is the motivation. If we want to stand for the people, we should be with the people. If we want to stand for humanity, we should be with humanity. If you want to stand with the right paced approach, we should do the right things to do that for the people who deserve, who deserve our service. We are servants. We are servants. We are servants. Call yourself a servant. Don't ever call yourself a master. This is the reality. And this is what the messengers and the prophets of God came and taught us, taught us how to live as individuals who have mission, vision, and and what? And life to give to others. You know, brothers and sisters, when you live your life for yourself, you live for 50 years, or 70 years, or 100 years. But when you live your life for others, you live forever. And this is the message which I want you to stand up for, because I believe in you. I trust you, I respect you, I follow you. Those people need you most, whether we are in Wakefield, or we are in Juba, or Muzaffarabad, or anywhere in the world. People need you. Don't ever underestimate your mission and start to fight about policy, procedures, salary pay. This is nothing. It's nothing. There are people are dying because they don't have a meal, because they don't have a shelter, because they don't have medicine, because they don't have a home. And what we are fighting for? If you want to live forever, live for others. May Allah bless you. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.